Hi, it's Ronnie Life Matters here and we carry on or oh, carry the recess 2.5 carrier game. Last time we made our first landing on the moon with an unmanned craft. This time we move forward to plan the first landing of a Kerbal on our natural satellite. But before doing anything else, we have a few issues to fix. The Might Sight satellite around the Earth has collected all the science in high space. We need to lower its orbit so that it can collect data for the Might experiment in low space. The science satellite with the magnometer boom has an apoapsis which is too high for the remaining experiments. We need to lower it. When done, let's see what we can do. As we are comfortable with the money we have, I'm going to upgrade the mission center to subscribe to more contracts. Let's check which ones we can take out. Science data around the Earth, perfect, that's an easy one. First EVA, wonderful, we are dying to perform one. Moon rover, yes, why not? 22 points of science are still interesting, we probably won't do it today. Land on the moon and come back. We already did it, but I need science points. As our final goal is to land on the moon with Kerberos and maybe, hopefully, make two biomes in a single trip, we need to scan it and make a biome map to plan our landing strategy. To do this, we have to unlock tech nodes and get the appropriate device. We unlock the space exploration node the MS-1 multispectral scanner is exactly what we need. Also, to ease the power management of our probes, we unlock the electric stack node to get the benefits of deployable solar panels, which can automatically point to the sun. As a new tech has been unlocked, we get back to the mission control facility to check whether new contracts are available or not. I decide to pick the Phobos mission, as we will make science around this celestial body eventually. This generates a new contract, which is precisely what I was waiting for, scan the moon. Also, I pick the radar altimeter one, because the two contracts can be completed within the same mission. As we want to perform EVAs in space, we must upgrade the astronaut complex. And as we want to collect surface samples, we must upgrade the R&D center. Regarding the missions we have subscribed to, we need a few parts we are missing. We need pods. No Kerbal can go into space if we have no pods, no storage for water and food, and no oxygen and nitrogen canisters. Note that the first pods we unlock have no pressure control. It's not very roleplay to send a Kerbal in space stuck in a suit for 30 days. This is why I unlock the next node and Kerbals will benefit from larger pods. They will have a bigger volume to live in during their missions. If we summarize what we have in mind, here is what we have on today's agenda. 10 missions are scheduled for today. Like we did last time, I will only show the main stages. And enough talk, let's get started. As making a biome map of the moon has to be done as soon as possible, we start by sending another satellite around the moon. We launch directly into the planes of the moon's orbit to minimize the length of the journey. In space, I deploy the solar panels and the antennas. Note that two relay antennas have been added to the satellite. Any improvement to the moon's communication network is good enough for me. We circularize, plan the Chilai maneuver, burn. Oops, I stopped the thrust a bit too late. 
As usual, I plot a mid-course maneuver to adjust the trajectory and log it in Gabriel alarm clock. Now let's make the manned experiments we haven't looked. On the launch pad, I run a crew report and when it's finished, I perform an EVA to collect surface samples and an EVA report. With a flea booster, we make a little jump to reach the shore's biome in order to perform the same experiments. We have time to partially collect a crew report on the flying low situation. Same craft, we go a bit further to splash into the ocean. We finish the crew report in the flying low situation, but unfortunately we won't be able to collect a surface sample as we dived into the water. We will have to redo it later in the game. It's high time to send our first cable in space. We are launching a simple craft with supplies for 40 days. When in low space, I make the first EVA for Kerbal. Note that the crew report has run automatically and the data is sent back to the research center. We are in high space, I perform another EVA. We make an additional burn to get the apopsis above the atmosphere. Finally, the first cable is in orbit. We performed all the experiments we had to do. We now settle into low Earth orbit, where we are safe from radiation to spend the next 30 days. We're sending our manned flyby craft to the moon. Again, we launch directly into the orbital moon's plan, so that the trip is the shortest. I think operations to get there have no secrets to you, so I keep only a few seconds of the most important sequences. As said previously, this craft will redo the science junior experiments in space around the moon. We unlock the science construction tech node to access key elements to build a larger rocket. In particular, we need bigger decouplers and fairings. The T-18 structural tube is also interesting because it can help to make a sort of interstage. Now we are launching a simple craft towards the SOI of the Sun. It's a simple probe which will never go back. When the mission is finished, it will become a piece of debris.
This mission is a bit more complex. I needed to have a pretty decent amount of Delta V to be sure to get it back to Earth. Our rocket design has been improved with two more liquid fuel boosters and you can also notice the fairing has been changed. Once in space you can clearly see the payload delivered has two stages. I designed the mission the following way. The first stage brings the craft in a collision course with the moon. And actually this is why I launched the rocket in the orbital plane of the moon. When at mid-course, I will decouple and adjust the trajectory of the craft to take the benefit of a gravity assist from the moon. The plan is to be kicked out the Earth's sphere of influence with a minimal delta V spent. When at the perapsis around the moon, I will perform a quick burn to shorten the time it takes to escape from Earth. Indeed, my crew do not have unlimited food and water supplies. Science operations will be run quickly to get back to the sphere of influence of the Earth as soon as possible. The node for the returning maneuver will be planned in advance. Then we will spend our fuel to get back on Earth in time and what is left will help to break when hitting the atmosphere. The pod has been designed with a strong heat shield to endure high velocities when aerobraking. I expect values greater than 5 km per second, even if I did not do the math to check them, because I'm a lazy boy. Well, that was close. The last mission which we'll still have to do is a manned landing on the moon. As we have plans for a special ship, we do not have the appropriate parts to build it yet. We are lacking a bit more than 90 points. We have no other choice than to warp in time until we can unlock what we want. Good thing there are several mid-course maneuvers to be handled. We do a trajectory update for our biome scan and altimetry mission. The trajectory is adjusted to reach the low space zone of the moon. I plot a node to seek rise around it. We will need more than half an hour to complete the site experiment. Our unmanned craft is about to escape the Earth. I warp a bit, then I check if all the experiments we have on board are running. I can notice that finally we cannot rely on the MITE experiment and we have to be patient. The magnetometer needs 6 days to complete. We switch to the moon flyby craft. In high space, we perform all relevant experiments. Then we walk at the perapsis to make a capture burn. I keep the vessel oriented to the sun, so that the solar panels are always exposed to the light. I switch off the material bay when in the shadow, life support systems need electricity to run. It was a bit too late, but fortunately we are not in the dark for very long. When I am in the light and in low space again, I reactivate the material bay. You must know that we don't actually plan to keep the lower part of our craft when aerobraking. This pod has an incorporated decoupler. We will jettison the lower part of our craft, the material bay, the fuel tank and the engine. If we do nothing, all the samples collected will be lost. This is why the number of the slots for samples have been upgraded in the VAB while designing the ship. 
The basic configuration provides only four slots for experiments. I upgraded it to eight, which is the maximum it can handle, and fortunately, it's exactly the number of samples we have at the moment. The Kerbalism mod allows a transfer. We can trigger the action in the pod menu. Well, this is exactly what we do. We transfer the sample from the material bay to the pod. While we did all the operations we planned to do, we escaped the moon and placed our trajectory to encounter the atmosphere of the Earth. At this time, I realized that I never did the circularization for the ScanSat satellite. I quickly jumped on this ship and, well, I'm half an hour late, but it could be worse. I perform a retrograde burn ASAP to save the mission. The sacrization is after the maneuver for the Sun expedition. I log it in Kerbal alarm clock, then I jump to the other craft. As planned, we perform a burn at the perapsis of the moon trajectory. This helps reduce the duration to escape from Earth by five days. Back to our ScanSat satellite, I circularize. We actually plan to land our cables in an unlighted area, not in the dark. That is why when over a pole, I change the orientation of the orbit so that the area which will be scanned is moving forward into daylight. When our crewed mission arrives on the moon in something like 10 days, I will then be able to choose its landing site based on this scanned area. At this moment of the game, we do not have enough science to go further in our mission. We have to warp in time. With what we just unlocked, we were able to design a new class of rockets. Ok, our Delta V heavy rocket is not totally accurate, we do not have the appropriate engines and fairing yet. Once all lunar expedition is en route to the moon, we get back to the solar craft. As we want to make a quick appearance in the SOI of the sun, then turn back to go home, I kill almost all the velocity just before the SOI change. Then we make all the science operations we wanted to achieve.
and we plan a small burn to make a kind of a U-turn. A few adjustments are needed so that our trajectory crosses the atmosphere of the Earth. We log a reminder for the atmospheric re-entry and we jump to our flyby craft which is precisely about to go back home. Everything is going fine this time. It's fortunate because I would not like to kill Jeb and Bill. Finally, we get these very 81 points from the material base samples, plus 28 with the craft. They would have been helpful for today if the catastrophic outcome did not happen last time. Our crew finally inserts its ship into a low moon orbit. We activate the ScanSat overlay mode to analyze the biomes and to check where they are. We want to land next to the equator so that our returning maneuver costs less quantity of delta V. This area with midlands in white, lowlands in dark grey and major craters in pink seems to be a good choice. We have an insane quantity of Delta V on board, we could even land with our TLI stage. Maybe we can do three biomes as they are very close to each other. We wait for a few orbits to be just above the desired location and we deorbit. Landed! B 
before getting out to collect samples, I'm a bit curious. I wonder if I can subscribe to a flag contract just now. And this is a guess. Haha, <laughs> I've been fooled so many times. I'm glad I thought of it this time. The lowland biome is a few hundred meters north, a little push is enough to get there. Here, we don't collect temperature, radiation or telemetry data because we already landed in the Lowlands biome in the previous episode. Yet we can perform an EVA, a crew experiment and collect surface samples. Then we do exactly the same thing for the major craters. That's a huge success really, free samples are going to be a great leap forward for our technology. Well, it's time to go back home. Our Delta V indicator shows we have 1676 meters per second left. Going back to orbit should take less than 860, and escaping the moon less than 400. There's a good margin to manage the re-entry in Earth's atmosphere. We take off and pitch to the east, we keep our trajectory as flat as possible to minimize the gravitational losses. Hooray! We are back on Earth. We now have plenty of science to make new probes and optimize our Delta IV heavy rocket. This video is already quite long, I'll stop here for today. Will the solar craft return from its journey? Will Hadrot and Catfried survive a deadly reentry? Will Bob manage to survive 30 days in space? Find out on our next episode of our Pocket Solar Adventure. Take care, don't forget to test install adopt. 